All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for a few real people just like you and just like me. All right, before I get going on this video, Killer Kings, Burn for Love, one of my favorite albums of 2022 uh, featuring amazing music from start to finish. Um, I got to tell you, I wasn't really expecting all that much and... You know, you listen to this a few times and it just it just really sinks in how good this is. Gregory Lynn Hall is your lead singer, been around the business for quite some time. Um, Alessandro, again, the overused, overemployed Alessandro Del Vecchio writing songs and playing on this. And it's just really great music. My favorite song is a tune um, on here called Higher. It's a song about Hunter Biden. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But Burn for Love is great. And um, I Will Be Stronger. Those were the first three singles and the record label did a good job picking singles. The problem is radio didn't play any of the singles and, you know, but they're on the internet, right? You can, you can just listen to them on the internet. You can go to Spotify and you can get one of these and use it as a coaster. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit weird about this stuff because... I kind of do. I feel like a voice in the wilderness here. Anyway, Killer Kings, a little bit like White Snake, Jeffria, Queen. The guitar work on this has got a Brian May thing going on, and I think hence the name Killer Kings rather than Killer Queen. Burn for Love, courtesy of Frontiers Music. Not burning up the charts, unfortunately. But you know who is burning up the charts? Ozzy Osbourne. Holy crap, Batman. Um, patient number nine is doing gangbusters, going crazy over on the so-called mainstream rock charts. Oh, I used to love that chart like 35 years ago. I used to love the mainstream rock charts. <sighs> now it is just a wasteland where uh, music goes to die. No, <laughs> just kidding. It's just all the same. It sounds the same. You know, there are a few chinks in the armor here and there. ACDC drops an album, they have to play it. If Van Halen were still together, I think if they dropped an album, they would have to play it. They they just have to. Um, and Ozzy comes along and they're like, yeah, we got to play Ozzy. I mean, Ozzy fits too, because Ozzy is the Prince of Darkness. And we've had 30 plus years of dark radio on the uh, mainstream rock charts, which again, aren't really mainstream, um, but they are rock, I guess, some of it. You know, look, I don't know how much Five Finger Death Punch and Disturbed and System of a Down and all these things, I don't know how much of that that you can listen to. It just, it, it doesn't do anything for me. And I need something a little more uplifting. Hence, you know, is this better than patient number nine? Well, for me, it is. I think, though, you know, artistically, patient number nine might go down as um, Ozzy's best album or second best. A heart, how do you beat Blizzard of Oz, though, right? I, and by the way, nobody tops Randy Rhodes. You know, Eddie Van Halen here, Randy Rhodes here. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Um, died in a plane crash. Um, finally got inducted, I think, into the Hall of Fame last year or something, deservedly so, by the way. You could apply, apply that same criteria to Jim Croce. I know we're way off from what we're talking about, but died in a plane crash, had a couple of albums. I, I don't, you know, again, I don't understand the Hall of Fame. Anyway, getting back to patient number nine, I think Ozzy is having the last laugh a guy into his 70s, um, well past his prime, but still creating some very interesting and dark music. Again, I do not like many of the themes on this album because it's the typical I'm the Prince of Darkness shtick. And uh, you see it in the videos, you hear it in the music. But from a creative standpoint, this is a very creative album. And it's ironic because he's got Eric Clapton on a song, which I think is really cool. And the song went to number one on the charts. One of those days featuring Eric Clapton reached number one 
on the rock radio charts, according to MediaBase. It follows a number one slot for the album's first single and title track, uh, Patient Number 9, featuring Jeff Beck. Now, there is a way to get Jeff Beck and Eric Clapton back on rock radio, right? <laughs> Man, they can't do it, though, as a solo artist. If Eric Clapton put out the most rocking song. Now, Eric has released a couple of really strong singles uh, since last year that were ignored by everybody. And that's because, you know, Eric doesn't believe in science. <laughs> no, Eric actually believes in real science. He doesn't believe in the propaganda. So that's why, you know, everybody just ignore. Oh, yeah, I used to like Eric Clapton. He was such a good guy. And then all of a sudden, he just went crazy because he couldn't couldn't play guitar. And he said he did something. Yeah, he did something and caused it. I mean, if that had happened to me, I don't know. I would have just like been, you know, curled up in the fetal position for a long time. But hey, you know, we're supposed to just dunk on this guy because he had a different experience than you had, even though all of these things keep happening. And I keep you know, hinting about it here on this channel. But again, you're not supposed to talk about it. Shh, quiet. Censorship. It's coming. It's here, people. It's really sad because I'm into helping people and saving lives. I'm not into, you know, genocide. Okay? Just put it out there. I'm just not into genocide. I know there are people that are. Now, Ozzy kind of sings about it, right? <laughs> you know, you got to cut Ozzy a little bit of slack, though. You know why? Because this is like a shtick. You know, this is his thing. You know, bite the head off of a bat, you know? Look like I'm the craziest person. And the kids all love it. And now you got the adults loving it. And a whole new generation, like, how many generations are there of Ozzy Osbourne fans going back to the Black Sabbath debut album? And really, Black Sabbath, they kind of started as a blues band a crazy blues band, but that's what they were all about. And then, you know, you get yourself an image and then you get yourself a following and the image competes with the music. Is the music as good as the image? I don't know. Again, if you're a fan of those uh, first two Aussie solo records, like I am, I'm a fan. And uh, a lot of it has to do with Randy Rhodes, but that material too is just really good, really well put together stuff and um, was a part of a lot of teenagers' lives in those days. And, you know, hey, a lot of us could separate the darkness from reality and not buy into this stuff. And then Ozzy, a lot of times, uh, you know, got misinterpreted or misunderstood. People thought Suicide Solution was a song about committing suicide and it wasn't, but yet again, they were looking to hang anything they could on Ozzy Osbourne. This is one of those examples though, is if you're kind of right on the edge of being kind of a dark evil influence that a lot of people are gonna think that you are, even if you're not. In the case of Ozzy, I think you really have to dig a little deeper and you'll find out that he might be harmless like me, but maybe not quite as harmless as me. But in any event, um, Ozzy is a cool guy. I will say that. He survived. He's still out there. God bless him, literally, right? Even though I'm not sure he would want me to say that. But I think he'd be all right with it. Who knows? I don't think he's that far away from understanding you know, the truth. And I think he may already understand the truth. But who knows? I mean, you have to wonder about you know, the personal lives a lot of a lot of these rock stars. And do they ever think about their own mortality and the importance of maybe, you know, getting themselves uh, squared away with God? I, I, I don't know. And, and maybe they just think at this point, I've already really screwed things up and maybe I shouldn't even try. But uh, I believe there's hope for even Ozzy Osbourne. There's hope for anybody who wants it. So in any event, folks, um, Ozzy, just kicking the butt of all of those um, younger people out there. And when I say younger, a lot of these bands that have been on the charts have been there for like 20 or something years. So most of them are 
getting a little bit older, but they just put out an album and it automatically gets played on mainstream rock radio. Um, none of the older stuff gets on there. It's great that Jeff Beck and Eric Clapton are being heard again on mainstream rock radio. I guess that's one way to do it. All right. Uh, I am done with this video again. One more time. Killer Kings burn for love. Really good. You get a song about Hunter Biden on here. It's uh, called higher. It's really good. You check it out. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Disclaimer. <laughs> Someone will, uh, you know, wonder if Alessandro is writing political music or something. And he's not, he's really, um, neutral, innocuous, doesn't go too far over the edge kind of songwriter open for interpretation, which is always a great way to write songs. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. It is December. So if you're in the giving spirit, I could use some help over on Patreon, a dollar a month, two bucks a month. It's been an interesting year for me and my family and a roller coaster ride in some ways here on this particular channel. Of course, I appreciate everybody who's over on Patreon, all the subscribers as we went over 63K, I think, uh, what, a couple of days ago, and somebody had pointed it out to me. I used to give these big announcements, and, you know, I think I'm jinxing myself if I say, hey, we just went over this amount, and then <laughs> for about three weeks, I didn't get hardly any subscribers. So I appreciate those who continue to subscribe, tell your friends, share the videos, Patreon, plus there's a new membership button if you want to do it that way. Either way, folks, I appreciate everybody, and um, of course, I will see you soon.